one touchdown. The motion man to the top of your screen. Milro is looking that way, throwing that way, and what complete is, to Nyblack. Amari Nyblack first down. I mean, you talk about an accurate throw right here. When he steps into it, early in the year, the question was, yeah, Milro can run the ball and he can throw the bomb, but can he throw this intermediate, intermediate pass? Yeah. That was an 18-yard strike. Absolutely. From the 43, back to Jace McClellan. Nice move outside, dips inside, and he's got 10 more. McClellan, Isaiah Bond got a nice tackle, a nice block talk, on the outside. Talk to, that's some power inside. And Alabama's already moved it into Auburn territory on just a couple of plays, and now here comes Kendrick Law on the end around. Broke one tackle and knocked out of bounds as he got around the 41-yard line. Let's check in with Jenny. Well, Nick Saban asked his team, what kind of passion do you have? How much do you want to win this game? He said having two touchdowns called back because of penalties absolutely cannot happen. So in the second half, they're looking to stop the run. They want to establish their game plan much better and play a soundment found football. And, of course, this one is so important to get to 11-1. And 8 0 in conference play, and that will set up the big showdown with Georgia next week. And we've got an Auburn player down. It's Kendrick Falk, the freshman, who's been starting in the last couple of weeks for the Tigers. Jalen Milrow leading Alabama today with a good first half passing. And this guy's been doing it on the ground, but not this time. Jace McClellan tracked down by Keontae Scott. Sure did time it up. Perfectly that time and kind of ran him down, outran him at the speed. This was a previous play before the timeout. He had an important player for this Auburn football team. Keldrick Falk going down and was helped off the field limping. 6'6, uh, 285 pound freshman that they think is going to be special someday. Let's see if Auburn can get a stop. Third down and three. No row. They had him and they let him get away. And Jalen Milrow, first down. Everyone misjudges his speed. Because of his size, it looks like he's just cruising when he runs. But everyone takes the wrong angle. He gets around him. Wrong angle by McAllister that time. He has, as we've seen many times, this acceleration when he wants it. What did Marcus Harris tell us? He's got the upper body. Of KJ Jefferson in the lower body of Jaden Daniels, something like that. He, he was putting body parts <laughs> yes, together from did. other quarterbacks. Jalen Milrow just flips this one to Isaiah Bond, and he's got it down to the 16 yard line. Yeah, nice job. First half trends. Jalen, 176 yards throwing over 100 of that to Jermaine Burton. And Auburn leaning heavily on the run. We expected that. Gary called that at the beginning of the game, and they did a good job of it. And quick strikes there. We had a couple of touchdowns in about a minute and 54 seconds in the second quarter. Roydell Williams, he gets stacked up and dropped for a loss. Auburn again gambling inside, bringing the safety into the box late. Getting that eighth man into the box. Watch him come late into the box. That means it's man to man to the outside. That's what stops the run. You got one extra guy there. Well, the third downs just keep getting bigger. And that'll be the case through the entire second half. But the Auburn fans know this is a time to come to life here for their defense. Rodell Williams with Milrow. And he's going to toss it to him. Rodell's got the first down and a lot more. Boy. He runs strong, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. They got a great mix between he and McClellan. Boy, Dell, he puts that foot in, and he runs behind his shoulder pads and knees, and Ooh. when you tackle him, you feel everything. Yes. Here's what Gary's talking about. Here's the point of impact. Boom. That's impact. First and goal. Opening drive, third quarter for Alabama. From the eight yard line. Roydell Williams again and again straight up the middle inside the five to about the four. Alabama scored 17 straight quarters. It's 
Scored a touchdown the first time they had it today, and now they're trying to do the same here in the third quarter. You look at Jermaine Burton on the outside, the bottom of your screen. Second down and goal. Empty backfield. Jalen Milrose all the way here, and he's dragged down at the line of scrimmage. It didn't seem to be a good design on that play. It just seemed like something was missing in this play. It wasn't a quarterback draw. I don't know if it was the center that didn't get out to help McLaughlin, but just something didn't work. By the way, Keldrick Bach, who was shaken up a couple of plays ago, is the guy that made the tackle. Chase McClellan in the backfield with Milrow, and that's Isaiah Bond in motion. Third down and goal. Milrow looking to his left, fires to the corner, incomplete intended for Bond, and broken up by D.J. James. It's so tough for those corners and safeties to handle that combination of the outside, and that time D.J. James did a good job. Watch it. They have to switch. They have to go with their guy. What are they going to do? And a good job. Ball was thrown pretty well. That's about the only spot it could have been thrown, but James with good coverage. So that'll bring out Will Reichard. So take a look at the corner shot, our AT&T pylon cam. That close to being a touchdown, but it'll force a field goal of 22 yards. Trying to add to his point total, Will Reichard, more importantly, trying to put his team a little bit further in. And they'll bring it out to the 25, and we'll send it down to Johnny Depp. Today, they, a lot of teams don't. This is a keeper by Peyton Thorne that got a couple. One of the reasons they don't is because they're completing just under 44% of their passes when they go at them. An All-American and probably a first-round NFL draft choice. He's been playing since he showed up in Tuscaloosa as a freshman. Jarquez Hunter now 80 yards on the day. He's trying to add to that total here, and he got five or six before he's hit over there by Jalen Key. If Auburn had any kind of answer to that last field goal drive, that would keep him right in the thick of this. Well, game. at least they forced a field goal. Right. So the, you know, the, it feels like the next team, I mean, Auburn's got to score next, it feels like to me, to stay in the game. Right. Thorne. <laughs> throws a slant. Got his man on the run, Javarius Johnson. Johnson to cut back to midfield of the 30 or near it. He had the touchdown on the end around, and now he's got a big play as a receiver. Great design of the play, a little bit of motion to stack the release, and then when they stack the release, they get a switch, and he gets inside on the safety, Caleb Downs, and that's what gets it. 37-yard pickup. Nice design. 31. Little wrinkles, just little teeny wrinkles work. And now Robbie Ashford's in a quarterback, and we know what kind of wheels he has. But he will keep it, almost lost the ball. And he's still trying to dive forward, didn't think he went down. He thinks his knees or elbows didn't touch. Chris Braswell made the tackle. We'll take another look. I did hear the whistle, though. And he might have had a point. It looked like he was, his might, rear end was on Braswell. It also might have been a face mask. So right there, it's possible he didn't go down, but Braswell was bringing him down. Peyton Thorne checks back in. The crowd boos after watching the replay. And it's second down and six. Auburn with a good drive going courtesy of that Javaris Johnson reception from Thorne. And now they run out of time and have to take a timeout. Yeah, they're more expensive in the second half than they are in the first half when you burn those timeouts. And Coach Freeze upsets. There's busted coverages, and then there's busted coverages. 
This time, just a small rub. He did not knock him. When he comes in motion, watch a small rub right here. Doesn't touch him, and then everybody freezes. Didn't even need to pick him on the play. That is a busted cover. Alex McPherson in for the point after. I'll take your busted coverage and raise your one. <laughs> Holy cow. They try to give Auburn the lead here. Past the midway point of the third quarter. It's up. It's good. <laughs> and the kickoff into the end zone. They'll bring it out to the thick of another one. Jalen Milrow, double clutch. And now he's going to keep it. And he's going to get a first down and quite a bit more. Did he step out of bounds? I don't think so. Nope. A huge run by Jalen Milrow. You have to have somebody that is ready for this play if you're Auburn. When he breaks containment, uh, you know, we talked about it. Bo Nix, Jaden Daniels, he's right in that area the way he can run the ball. Boy, what a tightrope job to pick up 37 yards. To the 38. Mill Road, a little short crossing route to Isaiah Bond, and Bond's got another Bama first down. The biggest run of the day by number four, and then just a little dump pass over the middle to pick up another first down. And yeah. Ari is going. This is a this is a good game. <laughs> exactly. Keep used to it. But but a little dump pass accurately. Bond didn't even have to slow down. He's gotten so much better. Jalen Milrow is on those short passes. Give it to your athletes and let them keep running. They got it all ready to the 22-yard line here as we wind toward the five-minute mark. And Milrow keeps it. Try to get a block from Dupree as tight end. Did get a little piece of one. And got it down to the 18-yard line. And Vesco brings you today's scholar athletes for Alabama, James Brockemeyer. And Tyler Fromm from Auburn. And Vesco. A wild card player, like a Dylan Bell type player that Georgia uses him. McClellan. Tried a little fake move to the outside. Did pick up about three. Bounced out well, though. That's about as good a defense you can play on these days on those type of plays that are going every which direction. I'm pretty sure if you'd ask Hugh Freeze, you want a one-point lead with 4.20 to go in the third quarter, he would say, indeed I do. Third down at three. The first down's at the 12-yard line. Bond in motion. Bad snap or a snap that was unexpected anyway. Jalen Milrow is going to try to turn it into a first down, and he will. And a head-to-head -head collision there at the eights by Nehemiah Maya Pritchett. And let's see what the flag's about. Two flags came flying in in a hurry. Was it a push in the back upon a block? Because it looked like a clean tackle. There you run. Personal, Personal foul. foul. Illegal blindside block. No blindside. Yes. Third down. And you've got to be in the vision of the defensive player. And this one comes from the side. It is a correct call. No row. Taking his time. Down the middle. Incomplete. Broken up by DJ James again. So the penalty on the blindside block, which was really not necessary. Obviously, you play aggressive football and you want to block, and it happens. But this time, the corners. DJ James makes another play. Remember in the end zone, he did it last time yep. to force the field goal. Makes another big play. Malik Benson was the intended receiver. And now it brings up Will Reichard. Makes it a little bit more difficult field goal. This will be a 42-yard attempt to make him the all-time leading scorer in college football. And it's wide right. No good. Uh, 
everybody here believes now that it's a game. Here's Damari Alston. Short game, little pushing and shoving going on. The end of the play. A little frustration on Alabama's part that they're trailing and that they just missed an opportunity to take the lead. Justin Avoid should be just cleaned that up real quick. We said we don't need a penalty yep. right now. That's for sure. He pushed Terry and Ardell out of there. It's a no. Austin flanks Peyton Thorne. Now switches sides in the Tiger backfield on second down and seven. And Peyton Thorne's going to keep it big opening for the quarterback. Out across the 40 to first down, Auburn. Aaron Arnold stopped him, but not before he got 14 yards. Called it a big opening, and it was. I'll tell you, Gunner Britton, number 53, just turned his man three yards out of the way. What a block. Everybody catching their breath a little bit. Avery Jones in there at center. He and Connor Lou have been rotating. Avery started the first six games, got injured. Connor Lou, the freshman, went in to get a good job, but Jones is in there now. Tigers stay with two tight ends on first down from the 41. Thorn throws going to his left, and he somehow got it to Javarius Johnson again. So Peyton Thorne, who started this year under so much criticism by the Auburn fans, watch this play. This is an athletic play. He's in trouble. He fakes it, gets around, resets his feet, and makes the throw. Now they go back to the ground, and it's Austin again. He's got a first down. He always got to be ready for the hurry up with Auburn and Hugh Freeze. He believes it's a big advantage against this Alabama defense. Not letting the tide substitute. Brian Petit in the game. We haven't seen much of him. Only on kick return. Yes. First down in Alabama territory for the Tigers from the 48. And it's Thorne keeping again. And he got about three. And we're going to work our way under a minute here in the third quarter. Second down and eight from the 45. Thorne again. Yeah. Tough run. He didn't he get the first down, but he's close. Playing like a single wing quarterback. Playing it all on the line right here. The transfer from Michigan State. Takes it. He knows he's going to get a hit and does a good positive play. Third and a yard. And Alston's got it. And then some. That should bring our quarter to a close. Unless Auburn hurries here for one more play. Just wondering about this Auburn backfield, though. We did not see Jarquez Hunter on that. And in a little different rotation, I wonder if he's been nicked. 